You're listening to Boudoir Therapy, hosted by Darlene Wong. I fly over oceans and by sea. Join me in my private boudoir where I raise the volume in the presence of coveted feminine and empowering business women I call the queens. Why can't we just be? Why can't we just be? You are not living life if you are not living your inner art. Sarah, thank you so much for being on my show and being part of this community of powerful women I'm putting together in order to help inspire other women to go ahead and pursue their inner art. And I would love for you to introduce yourself and tell us how you live your inner art. Thank you, Darlene, for having me. I take it as a compliment and I'm very excited to be part of your project, which I find super interesting. What is my inner art? So I'm also a huge proponent of a healthy lifestyle in general, that everything in the body is linked and like our lifestyle, everything is linked. So That's what I specialize in. And yes, I did get more specialized. So now I am a certified naturopath. But the the therapy that I choose to continue applying with people is really nutrition. So some naturopaths go with more supplements and other sort of therapies. But me, I really believe in a whole foods approach. And I really believe that you can get all your nutrients through food. And that's why people often ask me, what does holistic nutrition mean? And it means that it's a lot more than just what you put in your body. It's a whole, it's how you lived your life. It's, it's being active physically. It's uh, being able to calm your mind down. It's being happy, doing things that you love, feeling fulfilled. I'm there to sort of help women in general to just have a whole healthy lifestyle. Give me some examples of how you prepare food at home and how you take care of yourself in terms of exercise or other ways. I eat a lot of fruits and vegetables. So I find that you don't need to process your food. You don't need to do extensive cooking because then that would be too long and people People say it's unrealistic, but I just talk up on tons of vegetables and fruits. And then I just love assembling them in pretty bowls. So it could be like a smoothie bowl with lots of fruits. And then I'll add some seeds and nuts. And then it becomes like an art. I love looking at it and it tastes delicious and it makes my body feel good. So it's as much of a pleasure to do it, to prepare it, than it is to eat it. You make me so excited about vegetables and fruit. (laughs) That's the goal. (laughs) How about the exercise part or the self-care part of it? Yes, absolutely. So that's really important too. In the last 10 years, since I've had my kids, my eldest daughter is 12 and my son is, I've been someone who exercises a lot. Before that, not so much. And it's just part of my life. I, I don't have to force myself to do it. I actually enjoy it. So yes, I've had phases where I would go to the gym every day and follow a specific routine. But these days, I just do a little bit of everything. So I also have phases where I train for marathons. So then it'll be like running all the time and following a strict schedule. I don't necessarily have time to drive to the gym, do a workout, take a shower there, drive back. So I do little workouts in my house and I know enough that I could just make my own workout. How do you motivate yourself? Because there's a lot of women who are either stay at home moms or they work from home to do exercise. I'm going to take my example. I have a gym downstairs in my apartment building, but you won't find me ever there. You'll find me at the gym because I need to be surrounded by people who are doing the same thing so that I can also get motivated. Like, how do you do it? That's good, Darlene, because you know yourself. And with my customers, we talk about that a lot. So for some women, for some people, going to the gym is a huge source of motivation. Uh, They need to see trainers or at least people around them doing it. And that's great. And I was probably like that at the beginning. But then it was I had to choose like because I didn't have time to go there and come back and 
like instead of saying I don't have time, I'm not going to do it, then I just got into a routine of doing it myself. And I also got certified a few years ago to be a personal trainer. So I do have a base, like I know what to do. I know how to, to do it, but there's so much resources on the internet. So sometimes I'll follow a video on my computer and these people are good. They make you feel like they're there with you, motivating you. They're making you count to 10. And so I really make myself, I let myself get into it. They sound like you, right? Because like, you're just like, you're just full of energy. I don't know what you had just before this interview, but you're like, go, 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 go. <laughs> I had a healthy lunch. <laughs> That's what it was. Eh? <laughs> I've gotten to the point where if I don't exercise, I don't feel good. So it's as important to me as brushing my teeth. So it's become just part of my life. And if I can't do half an hour, then I'll do 20 minutes. And even when I travel and I'm with my family and there's no gym, I'll figure something out in my hotel room, even if it's 15, 20 minutes, just to get the blood flowing. And it just makes me feel so much better. I know what you mean. You know, I hadn't done exercise in a long time and I restarted in the fall time. And once you get into it and you start realizing the benefits it does to you, it's it's an antidepressant. It gives you a boost of energy, a boost of confidence, because it's all just a bunch of people who are super motivated and motivating you to move it. And my, you know, I used to get a lot of like water retention in my skin, especially my hands in the morning. And now that I'm exercising, I feel it a lot less. So have you discovered what your super royal power is by living your inner art? So my superpower is to, to make healthy, healthy food look delicious and fun and enjoyable. And a few weeks ago, I posted this sort of breakfast that I made with a muffin that I keep in my freezer that I cut into four pieces. And then I had some beautiful mango because I happened to have found mango that week that was on sale that I cut and put it on it. And then I drizzled some almond butter. And then I wanted to add something, so I had some frozen cherries. So I, I just warmed them in the microwave and threw them on my sort of creation. And then I saw a comment of someone saying, it's so unrealistic to think that normal people could afford such foods and would have time to prepare it. And my whole thing is that it took me 30 seconds to put that together, and it wasn't super expensive. So it's just to show people that you can be created with simple things, and it could be like, a queen's breakfast. You can make that at six in the morning when it's cold outside and you're rushing out the door just to give yourself this little boost of love in the morning. That's what I'm trying to show people that it's easy and it's quick and you, de everybody deserves it, especially queen. Yes. Well, I just wanted to know, so as, as a female entrepreneur and you're a mother as well, where do you where do you find your support to keep doing what you love to do? Well, I would be lying if I wouldn't say that my family is supporting me like 100%. And when I say my family, it goes very far because I have a lot of family members who are very supportive. But first, my husband. So when I, because this is a second career for me. So before I used to work in a family business and I, you know, I had quite an important role in it. So to leave that business was a huge, huge, huge decision. And uh, my husband could have easily said, no, that, that would be crazy. Like, how, how are we going to live? Like, we have two kids that go to private school. And, but he supported me 100%. And then I was also working with my brother. And I was so scared, you know, of his reaction. And he also supported me so much. And my parents, my parents, support me in whatever I do and they're so proud of this and they follow me and they're always asking me nutrition advice and they also live like a super healthy lifestyle which I I learned a lot from they say that they're not learning from me but I learned so much from them because we were always a healthy family and then I also have my sisters-in-law and you know one of them but they're such sociable people my sisters-in-law and my mother-in-law they know so many people, so they talk about me all the time and they bring me customers. There's such a good network, so I'm so, so grateful for all of them. 
Doesn't it feel like a reward as well, too, that they they really trust you with the advice that they're going to be receiving? Well, you're very fortunate, Sarah, to have such a loving family who completely supports you. I mean, I have goosebumps, you know, that's it's really special to have that. I'm telling you, it's very unique. It sounds like something from a fairy tale. I'm very grateful, very, very grateful. How would you define success? Oh, that is a difficult question. And success for me um, has changed a lot. So I would say that for the longest part of my life, I was very, very driven. Um, it was all about business. So at first it was the family. Well, a long time ago, it was a clothing business that I had. And then I worked with my family in the lighting industry. And I always saw myself as like a career woman that would like be like a successful entrepreneur or a successful career woman. And as I'm getting older and I don't know, maybe a little wiser or I'm seeing life very differently. And I'm noticing that I feel a lot more reward, a little bit like we just said, when I feel like I'm helping people. So I am looking more now to actually make a difference than to have like financial success or, or like big career or entrepreneurial success. Like hopefully these things will come and they are, I mean, they are coming, but hopefully, you know, in the long term, I'll have a lot of success like that. But it's really, I hope to change something. I hope to influence people or empower them or inspire them to be healthier and I love when people tell me, oh my God, like now I, I do this recipe all the time and I feel so much more energetic or so that's really what I'm, uh, and even my family members, the fact that they trust me and they ask me questions and they trust the advice that I give them, that's, that's success to me. And it must be very empowering because I can understand why you hesitated a bit when you said, well, success has changed a lot and I, I I would imagine since, you know, you were thinking of this career woman and having gone from your clothing business to the family lighting business and now being completely an entrepreneur and doing your own thing, a lot of times people define success with money. But in this case, you have found success being the a reward when you make a difference in someone's health choices that's amazing because it's your body right so you're fueling someone's body to keep going mm -hmm. yes exactly. in the most positive manner yes and it's it's more than just the body because if we're feeling good physically if we're feeling energetic then we have a lot more chances of feeling good in our minds also it's hard to feel good and happy when you're feeling sick and when you're feeling and of course, the two help, like if you're feeling good in your mind, then your body will feel better too. So it's like a double-sided, uh, it's a vicious circle, right? But I hope to make a difference with that whole circle. It's a good circle. It's not so vicious. It's a good one. I mean, it's kind of nice that you said you're, you're a holistic because it's true. You know, you can't just work on one part of your body and then expect everything to magically fall into place. Uh, I, I realized it myself when, well, I mean, when, when I hired you as well, too, to kind of take a look at my plan. But in the end, I'm just, I'm really just too busy to even plan anything. And then I just, you know, ask you to make me stuff, which is so much better. And then I added my exercise routine to that. And then I felt, wow, you know, like this is really making a difference. And then I started really taking care of my myself, whether it was to for growth uh, for professionally or something personally. I started really taking the time to do things that I really enjoyed and that made my body and my mind feel good. So the holistic part is really important. I know your personality. You're super happy, really jumpy, so energetic. I'm pretty sure you pump like those vegetables and fruit with some secret ingredient. It could just be the Sarah love. That's okay. But like, did you ever have like an aha discovery moment as to... I know what Sarah Catry is about and this is who she is and this is who she wants to be. Yes, 
I did. That was a while ago, like at, when I was working in my family business, which I was very much enjoying. But I had a ha- like I had very young kids at that time, and there was a lot of dropping one at daycare and and picking them up and going to work and all that. The, the routine that everybody goes through. I was finding myself so focused on the nutrition. I was reading all the books and I wanted them to have the best of everything. And I was making all the purees from from scratch. And I discovered so many vegetables because of them, because I was, I wanted them to try all the vegetables, things that I had never tried before, fired me so much. And then so much so that people were calling me and asking me like, okay, so how do I prepare this? And do you think it's safe if I do like, so I was already acting like already giving nutritional advice to people, but I had no, and I was like, that's what I want to do. And then it took me a little bit of time, like because I researched a lot of the programs and I wasn't sure if I wanted to go back to university because I had done a lot of, a lot of university already. So I'm, I was like, is that what I really want to do? And then I went back and did some science classes. And then I really discovered that my beliefs were into the natural world, the holistic world. So I found a program and that was my aha moment. It was like, I can do this and I can do it with how I believe in it. I don't have to follow like the, the traditional medical system that, I, that has a few things that I don't necessarily agree with, you know? Yeah, I guess that was the aha moment. And when people started asking me for advice, and I was like, why are they asking me? But it's because I guess I was so passionate about it. I would talk about it a lot. And so I guess that was my moment. I was like that too when I had the babies. Yeah, mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Exactly. I, exactly. So we, I guess we have, a, well, our, our business setups are similar, right? So we understand each other on that. Sometimes it takes for someone else who believes more in you to make you realize what you're really good at and who you really are. So it seemed that that phase in your life where people were calling you, it was it, they were messages like much deeper than that, just kind of trying to awaken that side of you. And it obviously did. It did. Yes. <laughs> And it feels good because you realize, well, it was just part of me the whole time. You were just being you, like you were just doing what you wanted to do, what you wanted to research. This was, it was good for your children. It was good for you. Exactly. Absolutely, Darlene. That's exactly how it happened. And I was fortunate enough to have people around me who supported my choices, you know, because it's not easy to leave a career and to go back to school and I know like I do encounter a lot of people who do it I guess it's more popular now but it, I mean still like some people have asked me like uh and and like why your job is not stable or why I'm like no my job is very stable it's my business but I I want to I want a change I want to be happy I want to do something that I love 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 yeah I find it's very difficult for certain generations or people with a certain background culture even such as my own family who is more used to a traditional way of making money and they just you know they they see I'm happy they see I'm struggling too but they just don't understand why I keep doing it because it is very unstable but I just keep saying, well, I'm just so happy. Like, I don't understand. Like, how, how could this be so wrong? Yes, and a lot of ups and downs. I, you know, I find that the ups and downs are what could be really difficult because you sometimes it's like, wow, you're super, super busy and you have like clients everywhere and it's like everything at the same time and you're like that's it like I've made it you know and then another and then another month it's more quiet and it's you know my business is very seasonal I don't know about you but mine is very seasonal like people want to get healthy in January and then they want to get healthy just before the summer but then during the summer nothing happens and you know yeah I do I do appreciate when I get to um uh, speak with another entrepreneur and they're willing to be open with the reality of the process because it's 
It is difficult. It looks nice on social media. It looks nice on a book. It looks nice in the magazine. But there's a lot of hard work to it and a lot of hustling. Yes, in the interior design industry, it does have it does fluctuate throughout the years.、Uh, in my case, because I rebranded not more than three years ago, there's a lot of fluctuations. But you know, it's basically everything happens in like. A couple of months, and then the rest of the year, you're just floating, and you're like, "So what's happening now?" <laughs> and then it just all comes back all at the same time again. You're like, "Why can't things just be distributed like evenly?" So I'm not going crazy when I have like all of this stuff to be responsible for. <laughs> We don't really have a choice in that matter. No, 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 and we and no, and we take business when it comes, right? Absolutely, <laughs> that's it. <laughs> and I've been more picky now about how、uh, how or who I do business with. So I am living with the consequences, but I've. I've made a decision that I'm only going to do, you know, the kinds of projects that bring me happiness. Because the happier I am, the better the result is going to be, and the better my name will be out there as well. Absolutely, and good for you for doing that. That's excellent. Thank you. <laughs> We go through this whole process of the entrepreneurial route and juggling your personal life, and you have a family. How have you been able to manage the like the negative energies of guilt and doubt and fear into your life or your lifestyle? It's a constant work in progress. <laughs> It's、um, I have a tendency to feel guilt all the time,、um, and I'm lucky that I have my husband who is completely anti guilt. So he's always telling me, like when I, sometimes I have to make a decision, and I know that I'm gonna make someone unhappy. I have to choose, like, because I see a lot of customers at night or on weekends, or so sometimes it'll be a, a week where I'm I'm gone all the nights, and then my kids will say, like, Ah,、oh, mommy, it's so. How come you're never there at night? And and that really, really, really gets to me, you know. So then I feel really, really guilty. But if I don't, if like if I refuse these customers, then I feel really, really guilty because I want, you know, to do my work. And if you know, so anyways, I'm always torn between career, family, career, family. But thankfully,、uh, as I mentioned, my husband is—he's really good at dealing with that because he's also super, super busy with his work and other things that he does as well.、Um, so he's good at like being present in all his activities, but then being present for the family. And when he's here, he's here. And when he's not, he doesn't feel guilty about it. So, and he gives me the same chance. Like if I'm not there. He's here to take over, and he tells me go and have fun and don't feel guilty. So I'm lucky for that. But I mean, in, in my heart, it's a constant work in progress. Yes, and I bet it was worse when you had children because I don't know what it is, but it feels like there's an extra guilt gene that gets developed inside you when you're pregnant, and after you have those babies, you're just like, I can't do anything for myself. I gotta take care of these human beings. Like they're depending on me. If not, like I might not have a live kid tomorrow. Exactly. No, no, you're absolutely right. I don't think I had any of that before the kids because I could just work as much as I wanted, and we. I was part of a family business, so I remember like we would stay really late. We'd eat dinner later, and we'd stay there. And even if it wasn't like for intense work, we would always be like my parents would be around, my brother,、uh, some employees that would stay later, and we. It, it was fun, and I had no reason to go home early. And even even when I was with my husband before the kids, he was also working a long hours somewhere else, and so it wasn't an issue. But as soon as I had kids, then it was like, oh my god, like how how do you give the best of yourself to your work and to your kids? It's so difficult. But I do want them to see me being happy because I do want them to understand that. 
growing up is fun. And yes, you have a lot of responsibilities, but it's rewarding. And it's uh, so I, I do want to give them the right example. So I try not to show them that I feel guilty if I do feel it, because I want them to understand mommy is allowed to have fun and to have a life and to, you know, like have a life outside of the family. Yeah, I think it is really important. After having my children, I realized that I really need to show them who I am. If not, they'll never know me as anyone but mom. More. And now that I restarted my life over again, I see it in them uh, that they're developing their own little entrepreneurial uh, skills and they've got their journal. I'm always writing things and they have theirs where they're writing down their business plan and the store they're going to have and, you know, who's going to run it and what colors of things are and the prices even of products that they're going to be making. And I'm like, oh my gosh, I'm pretty sure at five years, years old, I was not developing a business like this but I'm pretty sure it's because they're watching me absolutely uh, darling you're so right you're giving them such a good example you're inspiring them that's amazing and that's what I hope to do with my kids too and that's what I think your children are going to end up seeing as well is that you're so proactive about taking care of the human body that they're going to realize how important their bodies are. And it's going to help them also accept their body. It's going to make that phase of it just actually not even exist because we do go through that transition of, you know, my face, my nose, my this, I need to fix that. But because you're so into acceptance and instead of change it's you're you're fueling yourself with the right kinds of love towards yourself that they're going to only see the body the way you've been representing it i hope so but teenagers are teenagers <laughs> and and you know i know but you know what they still listen even if they say they're not listening and I think you're right. I think I think that that's exactly right. Because what they show, you know, is not sometimes you're like, oh, my God, like, it's nothing going in. But you're right. I think they've listened more than we think. And they're not going to give us the satisfaction of saying, oh, mommy, thank you so much for feeding me healthy foods and for, for telling me that I'm beautiful just the way I am. And but I know that it's 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 sinking in and it's going in. So that's what counts. Right. It does. And it's not more about what you're saying. It's about what you're doing. So it's going, th that's the norm for them. Their, your home is their world. That's their whole world. So you know how I design queen's chairs. I was wondering if you had a queen's chair of your own. Well, I have, um, my kids have taken over my house. <laughs> Because I do, I have an office upstairs, but my daughter's put all her books in it. And now my son's setting up a computer in there. And yeah, why don't we add some um, office ergonomics to your holistic well uh, way of being? I think that would be important. Yes. <laughs> Yes, I th I think it is. Yeah, but rethink that for yourself, you know, because I think you deserve that. What do you deserve from life and how will you make that happen in 2019? It's going to sound very cheesy, but I think I deserve happiness. Um, I deserve to do what I love and to just be myself. And as I mentioned before, I get more reward from helping people and making a difference. So I'm focus focusing more on that. And then I sort of have this theory that things will come because I'm sort of letting go. So it sounds a little bit funny and holistic, or, but I want to be, um, I want to do what I love, but I don't want to stress myself and I don't want to be too crazy with like specific goals, specific. I just want to go with the flow. Which is not my, which is not my personality, but I'm going to let it, like, let it be. You're gonna embrace what you just said, and you're gonna. Well, I'll I'll check you out throughout the year then, and see if if it's working out for you. 
I think it's I think it's good sometimes that we don't put um, very specific goals. I mean, then you end up putting more pressure on yourself if something doesn't end up turning out the way you wanted it to be. And uh, and uh, I love how you're you're you feel deserving of just being yourself. And the Sarah that I know is always happy. So it it shouldn't be too difficult as long as you don't stress out about it. Exactly. You completely, you understand what I'm saying. Thank you. Darlene, I have one question for you. In your new uh, branding identity, so you have like the boudoir um, word um, and then I've seen like your social media and I find you very gutsy, like you reveal yourself and you you're very comfortable with your uh, sensuality. And so you're very feminine, you're very, um, and I find that very admirable, very different from who I am. And I was wondering, have you always been so comfortable with yourself? And do you think that it takes guts or is it just natural for you? Well then, that photo shoot I did, the first boudoir photo shoot, I had to have a bottle of wine with my photographer and makeup artist. Really? Yes, it was. Really? Yes. And there I thought for you it was for easy and... <laughs> I thought for you. No way. I I knew I wanted to do this. I wanted to see what this was going to turn out to be. And, um, you know, I said, okay, well, I know my photographer. She's done other photo shoots uh, for me for work or uh, personally. And I, I just said, I have to do this. And I don't even know exactly what was going through my mind, but I needed to find my sexy back. You transition a lot uh, mentally and physically after having children. And I realized that there were certain parts of my body that just were never going to be the way they used to be. And the boudoir photography shoot was not even meant to be part of my brand. It was just, it was an accident. When, I, when she presented me the photos, I loved myself even more than I used to before I had children. And I was like, oh, yeah. Oh, oh, I really look like this. Oh, my gosh. This is... And I said, wow, look what it's doing to me. I bet this can help a lot of other women. And then I said, well, this is where I'm going to be rebranding re is trying to find a way to get the woman's um, playful to erotic side out of her to really live it and feel feel it. Um, and I'm going to dedicate my interior design to boudoir spaces and private spaces because those are the ones that we never talk about. So kind of like that inner, I don't know if it's like an inner goddess or the, the hidden inner alter ego. Uh, it, it just... I know that I always thought myself sexy, but I never really acted like this sexy in my life. I mean, my mom was in shock, actually, when she, you know, I would show her some of the photos and I'm like, mom, which one should we touch up, you know, and we, I need to send this information to my photographer. And then she would be like, I don't even know, like, is this? is this you, Dar? It doesn't even look like you. And I'm like, I know, mom, isn't this crazy? Like, look at me, that's me. <laughs> so, so it kind of took that photo shoot, um, the photos to reflect back to myself, to let me um, rediscover who I could possibly be. And it empowered me to say, you know what? I want to dedicate this kind of um, experience and create the environment that comes with it for women who are who feel they deserve to feel what they desire and so i i don't know how like it just came out like this and and now i'm doing this this podcast to um to kind of justify what it is that I'm trying to put together where I'm interviewing an array of different women with different backgrounds, different careers, and they're pretty much telling me that in the end, it is all about self-care and self-love. 
And I'm like, I knew it. I knew it. <laughs> yes, yes. And you and it's very inspiring to see what you're doing. And uh, and I'm 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 surprised to see that it like you said it was an accident and but I'm happy to hear how it came about and I think it's it's very inspiring to other women and continue to be gutsy like that because it's like a little bit shocking but it's a little bit like yes you go girl <laughs> I fly over oceans and by sea. if you enjoy the voice of boudoir therapy please leave your review on iTunes Follow me on Facebook and Instagram. And every Tuesday is Social Tuesday. I'll be active on social media if you have any questions. And don't forget the full moon special. Listen in a little bit closer to my story. Want to personalize your boudoir therapy experience? Visit www.darlenewong.com under DW Boutique to purchase your copy of Boudoir Therapy, a self-deserving journal made by me just for you and never never stop living your inner art because you deserve it